Oh, maybe. maybe. No, okay. I but Enrico, your you subtitle is redundant. <laughs> Last and ultimate being the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but that's rhetoric. Which is redundant. But it is cute. Yeah. But it is cute. Yes. We can talk okay. about your DPL. Can we start? <laughs> can we start? Okay. So let's welcome with us one of the men with the funniest talk you will ever meet here. <laughs> Which is not true because I have a hangover from last night, so I'm going to be boring and fall asleep in the middle of the talk. So one of the funniest men ever you can visit the talk, at least for the half time, telling you some nice stuff about debt tax and how to organize many, many packages and search in them. Please, a warm welcome for Mr. Enrico Sini. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the DebTag presentation, title, acute presentation of DebTag, subtitle, of course, the last ultimate step towards total war domination, which is, uh, well, uh, just because it's my compulsive titling, it's actually the best way of knowi knowing what's in Debian if without becoming an FTP master. <laughs> well, there's actually another better way, uh, which is bec being the DebTex maintainer and, and then you tag packages and then you have to know about everything in Debian because you have to, well, okay, that goes later. Uh, that the contents of the talk, I will talk about the current problems that need to be solved. It's very easy to talk about the problems, so I will do my quick ritual, and then I will explain to you the theoretical background of that tags, and then I'll do a demo of what's around. So let's get to the problem with some flame war, like shit, shit, shit. So we have 17,068 packages. Actually, we don't have that much, but when I created statistics, that's what it decided to do. Uh, which may be a bug, a bug in depth tags, but that, that, that's going to be something else. And uh, binary packages, so we, it's pretty hard to find out things. Well, you get the list like, what package do you want, is my favorite question in Debian. It's a really an easy question. But it's one of the ones which is hardest to answer. And um, compare that uh, with this problem that brain tends to be, tends to like f go away when you have more than seven plus minus two items. Uh, that, that like 17,000 is a bit bigger than seven plus minus two, which means we will never have a full understanding of the entire Debian archive unless we do something about it. We have sections, there's 33 of them more or less, but that doesn't really help because if you divide 17,000 by 33, supposing you distribute things equally, then you have way more than seven plus minus two anyway. And then there's categorization problems like that you can only have one section per package, so where do you put open office? I mean, is that, uh, it, it does pretty much everything. Or last night there was the problem of how to categorize a kernel driver to access digital camera. So does that go in graphics? But it's a kernel driver, so that maybe goes in admin, but then it's about, well. So that's the idea. Or we can do full text searches. Uh, that's some example full text searches I did. So if I look for a web browser, I get 197, which is more than seven plus minus two, like two more. Text editor 170 and um, if I look for a GNOME text editor, I get nine results. Three of them, they're not editors. Six of them, six of them is Emacs. <laughs> and then I, if I add cache search image editor, editor, I get 22 things, but not GIMP. So, well, I mean, they kind of work, but could be improved. So there's the, my best favorite way, which is word of mouth. 
So telling each other what's the best package, and we can trade like we do in Italy with um, stickers of football players. I don't know if that exists only in Italy, but when we are children, we have like albums with empty spots, and you buy the stickers and you put them, and you have to complete it and trade with friends. It's pretty nice when you are like eight years old. So we can do the same, which is fun and easy. So that's my list of favorite packages. I go, what? Uh, uh, I didn't understand the question. You're more than seven. You said there, you pointed out that your brain right. is Right. Your brain is bad. It's, okay, so you won't understand it. Right, so I can fix it. <laughs> Two, four, six, seven. Line. Uh, yeah, actually, well, look, cappuccino is the most important, and polygen is the second most important. So now you all install them in your laptop, right? Okay. So word of mouth or black magic. You can do searches. Well, uh, okay. You can search by. Th does that amplify? <laughs> I'm, no, because, uh, video people, I'm not hearing my voice. Do you hear my voice from the speakers? You're not hearing your voice, you just went deaf. <laughs> no, I mean, everything okay? No, it, you're not coming through the PA. <laughs> so um, we, we may have fallen with the recording. Right, okay. Hi! I can use this, no problem. Okay, better like this? Good. So you can search packages by black magic, like with some, <laughs> which may work, but may not be that intuitive. <laughs> so let's see what we really need. Uh, so, well, the, the main task is narrow the package list down to about 7 plus minus 2 to, to be compatible with the brain. Now, my, the capacity of my brain is actually 3 plus minus 1 because of the alcohol. So, but, so if you ask me a question, please don't say more than three or four words in the question. Um, and so, narrow down the package list. I, I don't... Uh, at least, I personally don't care about an exact match. I don't want a system that knows what I want better than I do. I, I only want to narrow to uh, an, uh, some package, a list of packages that I can actually read without spending the weekend on it, uh, and which has a high likelihood to contain what I'm actually needing. And we need to describe packages from different points of view since we have different kinds of users. So you can imagine that the, prior, the, the, the priorities of a developer is different than the priorities of uh, a lawyer or a scientist or, an, or a kid. And so that we need different points of view. And there's an insane variety and diversity of Debian packages. I mean, we have like Debian for dentists with Odonto Linux, maintained by a dentist, which is a Debian developer. And also, uh, he's from Rome, and he's the dentist of another Debian developer. Like, I so much love this. Like, <laughs> there's a Debian developer who has a dentist who is a Debian developer. Like, fix the bug. <laughs> <laughs> we have things for quantum mechanics and painting programs for children, for kids, and like lots of things. Huge variety, which gets it quite hard when you go to categorize them because it's really easy to categorize like image editing plugins. You have already a context, you're talking to uh, people in graphics and so on. It's less easy when, you know, there's pretty much everything. And uh, Debian changes continuously. So we also need something which can cope with evolving things. Like, for example, the sections, they, they, have need, they needed to be updated from time to time, but if we do like a major redesign of sections, we need to go down 16,000 packages to like fix everything. So, I mean, that this actually needs to be taken care of. And then, well, for comp for in order to be complete, I need to, well, we also need many other things, right? But that, that this is what we generally need for DevTex. So, let's see how we manage. And that's the DevTech's theoretical foundations. Uh, there was an Indian in the room, I think. I remember, maybe not. 
Okay, well, uh, anyway, I'll thank him later for having given us. Uh, that's the first app text developer. Uh, I can't read it, uh, but I'll, if we should, well. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Manoj, what's the name of Manoj? Manoj Okay, good. Uh, that's, we have a good leader. <laughs> and we used to have a developer named Vaidi Nathan Mayoranja. Okay, and how do you spell Nikhil Maya? <laughs> 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 okay. Just for fun. All right. Uh, so I should like read it for the for, for the fan at home that will like look, watch the video. So it's uh, Shiali Ramamrita Ranganathan. I tried. Well, okay. Actually, I didn't. I mean, that was not my intention to have fun with him because it's like invented library science. And it's been like quite a quite a person in the categorization work, and well, that's that's the uh, laws of library science. And li li yesterday the the gradient was different; it looked really neat, and now it looks really stupid. I wanted like to set it on stone. I've been getting a nice gradient, but it's gone. Anyway, this is Ranganathan's laws of library science, which I, 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 I just repl uh, replaced books with software and library with Debian. And we have the laws of software library science. So it's nice to go through all of them. I hope they are readable, especially the last one. So software is for use. I mean, it's not just to sit there and to say, like, I made the software which happens to be the case for many Debian packages, but well, software is to be used, so you have to find it, right? And every user, to every user, is or her own software. There's not a software that fits everyone, and so everyone must be able to find their personal software. So personality of the user is part of the search. And every software has its user. Well, that's like the opposite side, but like software implies some kind, different software imply different kind of users. You have to save the time of the user. I guess you like this one. And so you need to find things quickly. And uh, Debian is a growing organism, so things need to adapt. And, and so what he came up with is faceted classification. Thief are a bit scary, but right. Uh, so, which is, uh, that's one definition I found. It's about using clearly defined, mutually exclusive, and collectively exhaustive aspects of um, a subject and use them to categorize. So, basically, you find different aspects of packages, and, and inside every aspect, you have categories. So, there's not a unique namespace of categories. I do it like programmer. I say namespace. Every namespace has uh, uh, is related to an aspect, and 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 describes it. So we can have like, uh, what's the use of the package? And so you will find categories like editing and showing, viewing, playing, uh, so on, and gaming. And then we can have the what the package, uh, what kind of data the package works with. And so we have like image, text source code, and so on. And then we can have what language the software is implemented in. And so that means with C, C++. And then we can combine all of them to create um, combinations of these different aspects, allow us to categorize with an insane, huge, insanely huge amount of possibilities. Because then we, 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 do, the combinat we do combinatorial composition of different dimensions, so it's like different dimensions. And so we put the package in a multi-dimensional space, which is pretty neat. Well, anyway, um, 
there's many sets of categories, one for each aspect of packages. And so we categorize under different points of view. So that's me under different points of view. And uh, we do the same with packages. Thank. Well, actually, this one is fake, <laughs> this, this part here. But uh, it doesn't show, so I have a good dentist. But she doesn't run Debian. I'm working on that. <laughs> so fab tags. We have different aspects. We, they are called facets in depth tags. This is an example list of facets. Are actually, it's an extract. It's what I said before. <coughs> so we can categorize what the language uh, that it's implemented in. It's really useful if you look for code examples. And um, the kind of user interface, common line, X, uh, courses. Uh, the role of the package in the system. Is it an application, a plugin, a theme, a library? And the purpose of the package, what does it work with, and many others. Faceit is not a category. They are containers for categories. And, and they contain tags. Well, it's tag is the same as category, but it's shorter, uh, which is really useful when you use it a lot, especially in code. It's, you, you just have to, to, to have like shorter class names. And uh, this is an example of the different categories for roles of packages. So you, you can see, like, if you look at what's the role of the package in Debian, that's the, the possibilities you can see. The whole set of facets and tags is contained in the vocabulary. It's a text file which lists them. And the vocabulary is maintained on subversion by uh, the people subscribed to the, uh, the, the members of the Alioth DevTex project. And DevTex allow to have more than one vocabulary and merge them together, which is a really neat thing we're going to see later. But I just wanted to point out that they can be merged. And then a, a tag database that contains the what are the tags associated to packages that can't go in the packages file uh, because I want to avoid being like flamed to death because that would increase the packages file by another, at the moment, <coughs> 700 kilobytes. And then it would require like constant changes to the packages file because tags change pretty often. So uh, it's external. It's maintained uh, in this place. for historical reasons, but it still works pretty well. It's editable by everyone. So it's really open to denial of service attacks. And but we do backups. And so but we, we made it wiki-like just to have a get data as, as much as possible, as fast as possible. And that's the tag database. And now, those were the fundamental concepts. They were less than seven. You will appreciate that. Were they more than two less than seven? Fewer, not less. <laughs> so now I can show you. I can show you some DevTex things. I did. It's a. Uh, you want to double check, just in case it crashed? So uh, uh, the question was if I did start uh, the VNC screen grabbing system, which is kind of internal, so I didn't actually. Um, all right. There's like uh, two main, well, three, well, two main uh, DevTex programs <coughs> at the moment. Uh, three, actually. One is DevTex, unsurprisingly which prints a nice help in common line when you invoke it. The most important, well, one of the important things with DevTags is DevTags update. This will download, uh, it will require root and download an updated version of the package database. It will download it from its etc DevTags sources list, which contains tag sources. Uh, it would be nice if apt would like 
um, ignore things which don't start with deb, so I could merge it in apt, but maybe it's better like this. And, um, and you can add more things, and they can be merged. We'll see an example of it later. But I still like, I like this merging thing. I consider myself really smart for having conceived it. So, uh, um, You can do dev tags, cut. Uh, and so you can see like package, tags, easy. You can do dev tags, grab, with tags. And then you get, and grab is, is quite nice. You can do things like, and, and then we get raster image editors. Well, maybe you want to see it more visible. That's image editors that work, yeah, well, image editors. And uh, how many people use GNOME? How many people use KDE? Damn, it's even. TWM, <laughs> uh, TWM. Okay, well, that, that's not a, well. I can do things like and not, uh, I run GNOME, so I say the and not GNOME, so that balances a bit. Uh, and uh, I don't want the GNOME ones, and so that goes down, and then I can say that I want and uh, interface x11. And you see, it gets down and down and down, and you narrow, and you get to a nice number of seven. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so this is already, hmm? but, but what about the, the complex scheme? Well, yeah, oh, that's another one. Uh, uh, okay, the question was, uh, thanks. The question was, well, it's really nice, but the, the, uh, about the complexity of, of remembering all the 400 dev text tags. Which is a really good question. <laughs> but we have uh, like uh, graphical interfaces for it. So that can, oh, that, that, well. So that's a uh, use. You can actually do something uh, like really hardcore. Install all of them. OK. Sorry. Uh, yeah, OK, I'm not rude, but I don't want to install them. So that's a good <laughs> protection. <laughs> when you are uh, in hangover. Wait, 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 wait. You mean dev tags doesn't have a dash s option for simulate? Or Just like apt? Oh, does apt has it? Yeah. Damn Actually, it. it has dash s and then about mm. five synonyms. For OK, it. so the question is um, <laughs> uh, apt has a simulate switch, and so dev tags could do the same. I didn't know it. Thanks for the question. That will probably be implemented. Uh, file a bug. <laughs> and then you can like search tags. And uh, like these sort of things. But anyway. Uh, Dev tags can do like other cute things. Um, well, grab, install, we've seen them. Uh, you can, it can generate a to-do list for you, which is a list of the packages installed in your system that have no tags yet. <laughs> so you run that tags to do, and you get to work. You, you have installed them, so you know something about them, right? <laughs> That's shame on me, because I still have work to do. Uh, and you can do like crazy stuff, like, uh, Generate a list of um, tags associated to maintainers. Uh, I mean, all I can like get every maintainer and get all the categories associated with all the packages. 
And then I can do like let's pick a random maintainer. <laughs> then I can do for avoiding the useless use of cat. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I can see who are the maintainers related to Brandon, like, like they maintain nothing something related. similar. Uh, nothing related to me is worth tagging. <laughs> so I, I can do Debian developer matchmaking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, scary, scary, scary. None of those people are here. Maintainers? <laughs> I can actually do matchmaking with groups of maintainers. So it's like if we have a group of Debian developers going out for drinking, who should they call to go out with them? I mean, that's one of the possibilities of that text. You see the data is pretty flexible. Let's see if the cabal is reflected in that. Okay, later. Uh, there's no cabal. Repeat the question. Okay, the question was <laughs> <laughs> not repeatable. The question was very silly. The, no, the, I don't repeat the question because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> For because the like you would, yeah. be, you would be struck down. Yeah, uh, that's like it, it mentions cabal, so uh, and, uh, the, the question doesn't exist. <laughs> and I can do other like crazy stuff. I mean, th this is like the neat, stupid <coughs> things to show at conferences that I like to implement much more than useful things. This will go and like have a look at all the packages I have installed in my system, and look at the, the tags kind of around in my system, and then looks at the not installed packages and figure out which are the packages that I may be interested in installing. Yeah. I mean. Hmm? If you run GNOME and don't have libgnome Perl installed and it ranks at the highest, it's probably not too bad. That's, that's a yeah. good, that's a, sounds like a good guess. Yeah, well, that was uh, okay, <laughs> that was not a question. That was like, uh, good, good, well done. Anyway. Brandon said uh, <laughs> it's the result is not too bad because I actually run GNOME and I have Perl stuff installed, so it looked like it would fit. Okay, back to more useful things. Let's go into the world of interfaces. If it doesn't suck for all as usual, okay. That's DevTags Edit, which is uh, a GUI interface to the, the to DevTags. You can do searches. And you can do tagging. So you can get, like, see a package and then add categories to it, just in the blink of an eye. That's much more than seven <laughs> plus minus two. <laughs> but we are, like, creating funny algorithms to cope with that. And um, you can see that it starts with your maintainer email. It will pick it up from that email environment variable, like, to get you to work as soon as possible. If you are not a Debian maintainer, it defaults to showing you installed packages with the same idea that you should get working. So here's the entire list of 16,900 packages. We can try to do search. Uh, again, image editor. So we want to editing. And we want to add to an editor that works with images. And we're down to 37. And then we can see, you, you can see it narrows down. So once you get the search started, it will help you a bit to produce things. So I can see that I have command line image editors and X11 image editors. You are curious in the command line. And that's the common line image editors. This is really tagged. <laughs> Randomly, probably. No, not really. Okay. And uh, I have a serious question. 
Okay, that's the question. Um, some of the items didn't appear to have descriptions like X11 and Debian EDU. Debian EDU. Was that a bug or did somebody just not write a description for the tag? Oh, I'll, okay, the question is some of these items like X11 don't have a description. True, that should be added, but not necessarily. I mean, the X11 was a test we made and that's probably a face it which is not going to stay because it, we, we have like interface X11. So that's maybe redundant. And so that's why no one has been caring too much about it. And the Debian Edu one without the description, that's another kind of experiment. Okay. So the mostly used ones, I mean, the, the ones that we are a bit more sure about, they get a bit more care. And so we narrowed down things. And we can also navigate a bit more <laughs> fluidly. So I can see what can I edit with common line tools, with common line tools, I can edit 3D models, any file, plain text, raster image, vector graphic. 3D model editors for common line, we have it. <laughs> and then what are the interfaces I can use to edit 3D models? Right? Uh, I, I've been welcome to take questions possibly at the end uh, because of time issues. And and exactly, at the end and outside because they will shut us in uh, after the talk a and so on. So you can actually navigate uh, back and forth adding and removing categories and it gets to be quite nice. Um, all right. More things that can be done. There was the, Deb the, the Debian Edu, face it. That's not found in the central Debian um, tags that we maintain. It was an experiment I made with Fetter uh, two years ago. And we used the Debian Edu distribution generation files to automatically get a list of categories. And um, I merged it. I told you it can merge vocabularies and tag data. So that can be merged in. And so if you make a custom Debian distribution, you can have your own categorization for your users with a language they understand. And that can be merged and blended together with the rest of Debian stuff. So you can go like Debian Edu, like logic games. Well, that's already quite narrowed down. And then find the common line logic games. Well, there is actually a common line logic game. Even though I don't play chess on the common line, but maybe people can do it. So Debian Edu comes from Debian Edu. Like uh, Debian Edu decided it's a logic game in a school environment. And the Debian people instead <laughs> said that that has a common line interface. The two things are merged together. And, and so it actually fits different custom Debian distribution things. This, what, this is one of the neat experimental features, which looks very promising. Also, like as other entities can provide more tags, like GNOME people could like do GNOME tagging and uh, get them merged in or something. And I also can have personal tags. So there's the, there was the Enrico thing, which is not here anymore, right? Bug. No, actually it's a bug in my brain. Okay, well, I, I used to have an Enrico uh, uh, face it here, which would list like interesting, must look into it, essential. And I would like use it to mark packages. I maybe I see the description it's like, hey, it's nice, but I don't have time now. And so you can imagine that integrated into um, package manager to allow you to actually uh, put your own remarks on on packages and, and use them to actually search. So, or you say like install all my own essential packages like cappuccino, polygen, cause, and so on. Uh, and that, that's another neat thing that can be done. If you happen to run DevTex Edit, there's a hidden menu up here. And it can show you exoteric stuff. Just a random click on one, and it's basically packages that need working found with automatic heuristics. 
So this was all the ones which have no tags at all. And they are just waiting for you to say, it's user interface toolkit is GTK, right? And or we can do other things like all the ones that ha are using some user interface toolkit, but nothing is known about their user interface. Or th they are linking with some user interface library, but we don't know which language they are implemented in. So we're starting to develop heuristics to find problematic spots. And there's an uh, automatically generated H HTML big statistic thing that I don't run now because it takes like five minutes to complete. Uh, and you can go there and you see the packages that could need work. You click on them, you go directly to a package browser application, uh, and you can uh, directly add tags. So that's pretty neat. After you add tags in Debian, uh, in that text edit, there's a file, mail changes to central database. Easy enough. And you contribute it to tagging. So that's the other tool that we have at the moment. There's also package search. There was package search. It's been kicked out of my system by the apt6 transition. <laughs> and now I re-uploaded it. It may be kicked out again because of the GCC transition. <laughs> uh, that's written by Benjamin Mezang, I think, something like that. And um, it's uh, another uh, package search tool that uses that tags to, to look for packages. There's even a super, super experimental thing, which I just, because, oh, by the way, we have bindings to Python and Perl. <coughs> If people want to play, uh, every every functionality is in is in libraries, and there's Swig wrappers. So actually, if people want to play in OKML, that that can be done. I mean, the, the bindings can be generated, and uh, This is another example which maybe works. After, um, after Linux Tag, I've been talking with usability people, I mean at Linux Tag, and uh, they gave the idea of having an improved full text search. So I can look for image editor and segfault. Okay. <laughs> that spells GC for transition a little bit and like, well, the idea was that I can l start from a full text search, which is easy, and it will already narrow down a lot, the, the list of packages. And then I, I see the tags, the resulting tags, and I can do more like these, not like these. So I can go by example, like, yes, I want a uh, common line. No, I don't want uh, shared libraries. And that would narrow down your list, and it would also compute related packages. So image editor in apt cache search wouldn't show GIMP. But in this case, I see other image editors, and I see that GIMP is related, and I pull it back. So that's like new ideas to implement search in Debian. There's a lot of experiments needing to be done in that, waiting for fantasy mainly. Because you've seen the data is really quite flexible. And then I go to the conclusion, I think. It was five minutes left. The question was, there's five minutes left. <laughs> uh, so the things you can do as Debian developers is tag your packages which is kind of hard to begin with because there's <laughs> like a lot of tags, but I direct you to some tags you know and possibly you are the best one to know, like implemented in, the, the whole implemented in, face it, like what language the package is implemented in, you know it because you are the, the, the maintainer of it and you compile it. 
And so no one better than you can enter that data. So I mean, even if you don't do it complete, that's a good one. Adopt a face it or tag. That's uh, we, we, we can not only adopt packages, but also face it or tag. For example, if you know a lot about, like you're an artist, so you know about everything messing with images, you can adopt the works with image tag and, um, and make sure that it's accurate, that all packages which have to do with images are actually having that tag. And uh, well, also like uh, helping like the DevDex people could be useful. Like the, the website is totally underdeveloped and the DevDex packages need, well, they're very well developed because actually I do it. That they're very well maintained, but well, I, I tend not to have the time to maintain six packages which depend on each other. And so, or maintain a language binding and play with code to find out like smart things with uh, interfaces and so on. That's about the play with code. There's a nice play with code thing. Don't sec fold, please. <coughs> Thank you. There's many great ideas needed to be discovered. So we see this is very long, right? Takes a while. I clicked, I swear. I mean, don't change the cursor to the no. That's much less. And there's an algorithm that can compute that some can be included in others without losing information because it looks at all the packages and, and, and can figure out that, for example, uh, game is games has been hidden because I can say I use it for gaming. And so I don't lose much information if I take it out because all packages which have game tags also have use for gaming. It's used for gaming tags, so it can figure out that it can safely remove it. And then when I go into use for gaming, then game will show up. So that's another, I mean, all ideas that it's a really nice experimental area. I actually would like to work for a university and be paid to do it and publish lots of papers because it's a really fertile research environment. And uh, yeah, play with the code, even if you write a silly, application to do very few things. It's really helpful because I have someone testing my code and give me feedback on the documentation and on the API. And those are resources. There's a mailing list, really friendly, because I moderate it. And whoever is not friendly, I kick him out. <coughs> I should ban, actually, Andrew Saffield from ever subscribing to it. <laughs> but I want to give people a second chance. Uh, is Andrew Saffield here? No, I haven't been insulted yet. Right, okay. Uh, and there's a website which does a decent job of listing uh, resources, at least. So the talk is one minute. I take, just because it's the DPL, but there's another question I remember, but okay, you have the mic. Do it. Well, I just had a couple of comments. One is I did, uh, I did, this is impressive stuff, first of all, it's, it's quite seriously, because we've had for years a serious searching problem. When I first joined the project, or actually when I first started using Debian, sorry, back in 1996, I was already overwhelmed with the number of packages that were present at the time, and we are so much larger nine years later. So uh, this is exciting looking stuff. And second of all, I want to congratulate you, not entirely facetiously, on managing to launch this project and bring it so far along without the involvement of E. Ray Oscarall. And maybe some of us here will remember what that name means. So I'll, I'll let you have the next question now. OK. <laughs> Thank you. You don't know him? No. OK, count your blessings. That's, that's very <laughs> OK. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you, okay. but Close it. we are really out of time. Um, perhaps you can take, uh, ask, answer any other questions outside. Um, but thanks. Anyway, Enrico, it was, again, funny to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we will start at 
five past nine with Debian development in the third world, Latin America by Gunnar Wolf in this room and in the small room um, above called Appealing Presentations with Latex Beamer by Andreas Tille. So, see you soon in the smoky. Please get out of here as, far as, as soon as possible. And please don't forget your bottles and your other um, trash. trash. Thanks. Trash.